What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of For the Love of Cinema, a movie podcast where our motto is, we just hope it doesn't suck. This is episode 377, broken up into two parts, A and B. A, B. Double duty again, 377A, posting on April 9th. 4-9 will be a discussion on Godzilla, Cross Kong, The New Empire, and 377B. Posting on April 12th will be a discussion on Spaceman, a Netflix original with Adam Sandler. I am one of your hosts, Grayson Maxwell. Joining me as he does every week is my co-host, Roger Stillian. Chris has moved with his family to Switzerland so he could pursue his dream of yodeling. Mm. Much to the dismay of many people, he just up and left. And he's going to pursue his yodeling dreams. I support him 100%. Roger, what do you say about this? He's a subpar yodeler at best. I mean, I... It's a I, fool's I, errand. It is a fool's errand. <laughs> I, I, I want to picture him in long dreads and yodeling about Barking eating stocks. his lunch. Barking stocks and yodeling about eating his lunch. And yeah, I totally can picture him doing that. And that long beard of his sometimes. And yeah, yeah. 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 There's that. <laughs> there is that. All right. What's going on this week, Roger? How's it going, my friend? What's so up? tomorrow is the eclipse. So if we don't all self-emulate, um, then you'll probably hear more from us next week. Probably. It's like 50-50, honestly. All right. 50-50. Whatever. What if this is, what if this eclipse brings about the end of the world? Then no one, no one will hear this episode. So I made that joke at work recently. And three out of the five people near me went, I go legitimately all go at the same time. I fucking hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, it says a lot about my employees and their, or my, my fan or my, my work family and their mental health. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Well, I mean, I, I would also agree with that because the ones who don't go, the life's good for wife for them. is just going to be shitty, shitty, yeah, shitty. No, that's fair. So I agree. I agree. But I don't think the world's coming to an end anytime soon. At least I don't think it is. I mean, it could be. Any nah, other. It's, un- it's unlikely. Not I impossible. Mean, I mean, this could be, we could be living on borrowed time. Honestly, we, we, I we mean, could. Except for a fact, eclipse happen, you know, every year and it's just the time it's our turn to see one. So yeah, sure. And I totally get that, but Multiple there's like times every time some you, areas. <laughs> every, um, every year there's always some weird, I don't want to call it crackpot, but like weird theory about why we're getting some kind of weird, you know, because 2012, like the people legitimately thought the world was done. Like it was over, done. We were headed for destruction and then nothing happened as predicted by most people. And, you know, it didn't happen. But did you harbor any weird 12 or 2012 theories? No. I just remember uh, 2012 the, uh, when the earth was supposed to end was actually my, uh, a guy you know and a good friend of mine. His name is Nick. That was actually his 21st birthday. Ooh. So, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Hell of a 21st, man. Hell of a Back 21st. Hilarious, right? <laughs> Fucking hilarious indeed. Well, it got cold here a few days ago, and it's been cold for a few days now. Like To the point where like I have to wear a jacket. Mm. I'm like, what is this? What is this nonsense? I'm in Los mm. Angeles, man. I don't want to wear a jacket. But it's been very cold lately, so that's what's going on here. How's the weather? In the Ohio Valley, a lovely sixty-two degrees, balmy sixty-two. Mm-hmm. See, it's nice. Back east, you guys have there's this thing called humidity, which makes sixty-two sometimes feel like seventy or seventy-five. But oh. here, not there. There is not much humidity at all, so sixty-five is actually quite cold. Mm. Yes, indeed. So, other than that, just been soldiering on as normal, working, living, <laughs> working, watching, living. Watching movies, doing podcasts. I'm actually, sure. I'm actually eating these wonderful Easter cookies that I had left over from last week. These are delicious. I've got to say, they're like, uh, you can hear the bag opening to one of them. It's like a buttery, so good. It's probably so bad for you. That's why they're so good. But man, good. they're delicious. How were their Dr Pepper peeps you ate? Well, the office was kind of split. I, I meant to tell you this. The office was split on how these things taste. So. My production coordinator, he instead of getting like he he thought he he thought he was doing something nice for the office, and you know most of the stuff bought on Amazon, so he bought some peeps, but he didn't realize he bought an entire case of Dr Pepper peeps. Oh instead of, god! And, and instead of like two packs, he thought he just put two packs. He was he said he was moving quick, and he just wanted something nice for the office for last week. And um, let me tell you, they are exactly as you would think a Dr Pepper peep would taste. Fucking disgusting, got you. Awful. I didn't. <laughs> 
there was it's funny because like one of the people in art was like these actually aren't bad and she just kept eating them like you are not human being Good. That these is are not... yours take them <laughs> yeah that's what I, that's like well i'm Here's sure 256 more. packs of peeps congratulations <laughs> that's i mean i look some people like them some people don't but we have a funny peep story which we'll i guess not tell this year but um <laughs> dave dave remembers he dave does. was so bad that day oh my gosh so oh, every time i think about it his peeps every time i think about it i just he was so mad that we so well, i guess the story is short one year that i was working at marquee after well after college and roger myself roger and another assistant manager dave was working and he just he he, he put his peeps on the counter and just went about his opening duties. You know, he's, we were all kind of getting ready to open for the day. And then Roger and I, like idiots, we stick all of his peeps that he had purchased with his own money into the microwave. Well, well, I asked him before if he ever seen a peep microwave because they <laughs> blow up real big. Oh, that's right. That's right. And he said no. And I said, all right, well, give me one. And they gave me a handful of them. And then we vaporized them in the microwave. And yeah, Dave wasn't real happy about that. Well, he it didn't expect you to. He he didn't expect us to do it to the rest of them. Well, you know what? <laughs> he didn't specify that I, I couldn't do such a thing. I mean, that's a weird way to look at it. Look, look, I replaced his peeps. You did, but he was so upset. For he was like, I mean, that was genuine upset. I remember on he his was face sad. too. He was sad. His uh, his afternoon treat or his morning treat was taken away from him. But yeah, he could have had one mega peep with with had a bunch of eyes melted one, together. One but. melted goo pile. <laughs> Yes, peeps are disgusting. I look. I honestly, I've, I've, I've tried. There was a Dr Pepper one. I know that uh, this year in the office, someone had like blueberry peeps, and I just, I, I've never, I've honest, I don't think I've ever had a peep that I, I, I enjoyed. I just, I don't think there's that's a thing. So, no, they're gross. <laughs> they're gross, but they've been. It's like candy corn. They just keep coming back, dude. They're never gonna go away ever. Anyway, yeah. moving on. Do you have a preferred Easter candy, real quick? Um. So yeah, actually I do. Um, and actually, so this year for the first time, they've actually made them better. So like, I love like those little Cadbury mini eggs that are just the, the thin candy shell with like the, the good chocolate in the middle of them, not the disgusting Cadbury cream eggs. Um, those are fucking gross. Um, but this year they made them in dark chocolate. So Ooh. hell yeah, brother. I'm Ooh. a big dark chocolate guy. We 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 had a bunch of those little tiny like ice cube trays of mini Cadbury. You know how they sell them those little mm-hmm. tiny trays. I like the big Cadbury eggs where you can like eat them and like there's that gooey center. That no, they... those things are fucking gross too. What I like no, those. No, those are disgusting. Good. All right. Well, I mean, just because you don't like it, it doesn't make no, it no. They're fucking gross. <laughs> okay, fair There's enough. Movies. But I think the best Easter candy is the Reese peanut butter egg, a Reese peanut oh, butter cup in the well, egg so shape. So there's a new version of those now too. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw this. Now they have what they call the Mallow Top. They oh. have their their regular Reese cup underneath, and then the top is like white, but it's mm. not white chocolate. It's marshmallow chocolate, and it's not like marshmallow like texture. It's really good, actually. Is it really good? Okay, I yeah. enjoyed it actually. Yeah, it was pretty good. I'll have to give it a go. I know a lot of that Easter stuff goes on sale now, so it'll be like dirt cheap. Just some big stores want to get rid of it. So yeah, no, it's already gone. I might give it a go. What else? Anything else this this week, or just out of um, the that? No, so I watched some movies this week. Um, mm. So not the movies we were talking about. So I finally watched Boys in the Boat. Oh, um, the yeah. What do you think? So I liked it. Um, it's got some problems. Um, obviously, you know, we didn't end up talking about it on the show, but like I enjoyed it overall. Like it was a good story. Um, and uh, those dudes must have worked their ass off to be able to do what they did. So I'm sure they did. I, did. I respect them for that. Did, did you do think that my uh, review of spectacularly mediocre was right on the money for that? Um. <laughs> yeah, no, that's probably fair. Um, because like at times it's really good, and other times it's kind of like, what the fuck? <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's fine. It's not out there or anything. Like, look, it's a good old people movie. Um, I watched it with a bunch of old people on Easter, or uh, excuse me, the day after Easter that we're still like hanging around. So, all right, fair enough. Yeah, you know, there's that. Glad you finally watched it. Yeah, I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. It was just like middle of the road for me. So, yeah, yeah, but I really enjoyed myself. What, what else do you watch? Um, no, I'm actually drawing a blank. Oh, so I watched one of the, uh, I watched Godzilla King of Monsters again in lead up to Godzilla. Um, it's still as bad as I remember. <laughs> um, I disagree, but we'll, we'll, we'll have, we'll talk about that one later. But I watched yeah. something else on Netflix that I don't remember either. It was wasn't, that one. not, not Spaceman. I watched Baby no, Driver. I did again. watch Spaceman. We'll talk about that in a couple <laughs> hours. And, I did watch ooh. Baby Driver again this week, which was good movie. Yeah. I, I really like Baby Driver. I think it's a little, it's a little out there, but yeah, I do overall think Baby Driver is a is a great is a great 
much better than average movie. So yeah, I'm no, watch that one good. as well. Good, uh, good. Let's get started at the 950 mark. Let's do it. Do it. Let's do it up. Let me close this. Hold on. Close, close, close. All right. Here we go. Yes. This is episode 377 of For the Love of Cinema, a podcast about movies, film, and cinema is posted each and every Tuesday and Friday at 5 a.m. on Podbean, which then distributes to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and now YouTube. Each YouTube. Week, each week we start with the box office, current and upcoming releases, what streaming trailers and movies of the week. Without further ado, and for the first time in a few weeks... Let's talk about the box office because we didn't get to it last week, which is odd for us. But well, we didn't get well because it was we did it a day earlier. Remember, correct? Because of Easter. Oh yeah, of course. It just it just uh, that doesn't happen very very often. But no, nope. the number one spot, of course, goes to Godzilla Cross Kong: The New Empire, the God given uh, Easter movie this year, thirty one point seven million domestic with a with a total in two weeks of three hundred sixty one. Which that's not too shabby. I guess yeah, the good Lord willed us, blessed us with another Godzilla movie. <laughs> With some with some saviors fighting together to take down another right. big bad. Number two, Monkey Man, ten point one million, which is a worldwide of twelve point seven million. That's a shame because I bet you that movie was not cheap to make because stunt guys are not cheap. Well, when we talk about that next next week, and we will talk about it, I have some real stuff to talk about mm. about how that movie came about. Good, good, good. I'm sure it's very, it's all interesting. A lot of the stuff I come find out about movies is like is actually more interesting than the movie itself. It's just kind of how it came together. But yeah. Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire number three nine million, bringing a worldwide of just a very sad total for you, Roger one hundred thirty eight. Because I know you expected more from that one. It's you what it deserves. It. Uh, sure, I mean I don't think that about any. I mean most movies, but the first Omen eight point four million with a worldwide of seventeen point four. It's doing very well and is actually getting positive reviews. So there you yes, go. Yes, so that was a nice change. Well, it just doesn't happen that horror movies usually get positive reviews. So I'm happy that it is. Kung Fu Panda 4. Go ahead. Speak your whatever name for it. Nope. Okay, 7.9 million. Number five with a worldwide of 410. Can you believe that's beating Godzilla vs. Kong? Well. Can you believe that? I mean, here's the thing, right? And I'm not saying that it will, but it is within striking distance of five hundred million dollars. It could, it could trickle. It has in. a chance to trickle to five hundo. And here's the thing: this movie we talked about it when we reviewed it is an okay movie. Yeah. Nothing special. Like, look, if you like Kung Fu Panda, you'll like this movie. But it costs significantly less to uh, to make. So I agree. You know, there's I that. agree. Well, that's the. Uh, and for at least the next few weeks, is it still doesn't have much in the comp- much in the way of competition for dedicated kids movie. You know, is kids safe? You know, listen, take your kids as the Monkey Man. It's fine. I, I, uh, maybe read the read the warning, read the poster first. Do um, not do please. that. Why? Why? No. Listen, this is America. You can do whatever you want, brother. I mean, you can, but it's you know. See? I, I just think you should do 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 your due diligence first. That's all I'm saying, viewer or listener. Please do your due, due diligence. But as Roger has the funny story of kick asses, angry parents the first day. Like, I mean, well, you who are you angry yeah. at, mom and dad? I mean, who are you angry at that for? Yeah, no, it's just your fault. Hundred <laughs> percent your fault. I actually find it quite funny when when people at the movie theater would come to you for things that not not only were outside your control, but number two were one hundred percent their fault, and they would say that. They want like they want things for this, and like, look, we'll do what we can, but at most, you're going to get your movie ticket money back. We're not. Let's not, you know, get crazy here. People are nuts. Yeah, you, I mean, you can make all the demands that you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I remember one time this guy came More up with it. This you, is brother. my like my fourth week when I was 16 working at Carmike Cinemas. And this guy came up with a medium popcorn bag, and he he said, "I want a refund for my popcorn." I said, "Okay, let me get my manager over." I said, I called over Mr. K, our manager, and um, he looks at the guy and says, what, what can, how, how can I help you? And he, he goes, my popcorn was, there was a problem with my popcorn. I want a refund. And my manager looks in the bag and says, but there's there's no popcorn in here. He goes, oh, I ate it, but it wasn't good. I'm like, what do you want a refund then for? Like, what do you, what? That's always good. That's always in my mind. It's like, are you kidding me? What the, what are we even talking about this? You're wasting my time. Get away from my counter. You ate yeah. the whole freaking thing, man. Why do you want a refund? Anyway, 
So yeah, that's some weird. Boy, I could talk for hours about movie theater stuff, but yes, indeed. Yeah, I worked for a telecommunications company. I can tell you how stupid people are. I won't do that today, but right. I can. Fair enough. Well, it's I well. I assure with... you that I can. <laughs> it's well within your, it's well within your, uh, your thing to do that. So. Oh yeah, no, I'm really good at it. Let's talk about some upcoming releases. This past weekend, the first Omen, Monkey Man, and Wicked Little Letters goes wider. Very excited for two weeks from now, Roger, when we talk about. Civil War, which came out, which comes out on the twelfth, and don't tell mom yep. the babysitter's dead and sting. I already have tickets for IMAX. I'm super excited for Civil War. Very excited. Yeah. Uh, April nineteenth, Abigail, Hard Miles, The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, and Sus- Sasquatch Sunset goes wider. April twenty sixth, which is a Friday, Alien re release. Fucking a! I didn't, I didn't know they were doing that this year, but I'll take it. I'll watch that. Uh, Challengers and the oh the mummy's also getting a re release of Brendan yeah. Fraser. That's pretty awesome. Um, what are we talking about? Uh, May third, which is a Friday. The Fall Guy, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace gets re released, and Taro. May tenth, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, and We Grown. Now, what? I don't, I don't, I'm interested to know what that actually is. So I clicked on it. We Grown Now is growing up in the 1990s Chicago in Min Hall Beige's We Grown Up trailer. Or We Grown Now. Okay. Um, okay, I'll mind check that out. That one looks, looks interesting. I like those kind of retrospective look, looks back. May 17th, Back to Black, If, Imaginary Friends, and The Strangers, Chapter 1. May 24th, Furiosa, Mad Matt Saga. I know that's big with you and Chris and myself also, but I know you really, you really love that movie. And the Garfield movie, and it's funny how a movie you love and a movie you couldn't care less about the same day are released. Oh, it doesn't matter to me. Never going to watch it. <laughs> but Garfield or Mad yeah. Max? <laughs> Garfield. <laughs> Garfield. And May 31st, Ezra, which I got to, let me ask you, I don't think we talked about this last week, but we, we've we seen the the Ezra trail with with, uh, with Bobby Cannavale. What do you think about that? Um, so, I mean, I think it's interesting. Like, it hits home for me because my daughter has special needs. I don't think I usually don't talk about that too much here on the no, show, don't. but... Um, it uh, it looks like that could be a good movie, and I hope it's done well. So that one might be one of the ones I'll check out. Probably not, you know, immediately. I'll wait till it hits streaming to uh, to take a look at it. But uh, that, 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 that's a movie. It. That's a movie that's like ripe for like streaming content. Like it, it'll be strong on streaming for months because people will just mm-hmm. check it out. But yeah, I like movies. Movies like that. And the trailer looks at it. Same with that one with um, who was in Madam Web? Uh, what's her name? Dakota Johnson and. Uh-huh. Sean Penn is a t- is a cast taxi driver. It's just I'm, I'm I'm excited to see these two movies because I I, I like to be reminded and I I often forget because I'm a huge budget type of guy. Is movies don't have to be hundred million dollars. Mean, they can be super small budget and very low key and still be very powerful, very well done. So I'm excited for those for that reason. But June seventh, we'll stop here in June. But Bad Boys for Ride or Die, big deal for me because that that was that was literally all of my last year. It was Bad Boys. Bad for Boys. Bad for Boys. Yes, and The Crow. Sorry, Crow, you're going to get crushed by bad boys, I have a feeling. Um, June 14th, Pixar's Inside Out 2. I'm sure that will be massively successful. Yep. And The Watchers, June 21st, The Bike Riders and It Ends With Us. And then 28th, I'm going to say it's fast so you don't have any chance. Horizon and American Saga. There you go. Horizon and American Saga. And A Quiet Place Day 1. Have you seen the trailer for Horizon American Saga with um, Kevin Costner? What do you think? Uh, I have seen it, and it uh, looks interesting. Feels like that's, it's going to be an that's it. I think that's movie. his passion project. Like he put all of his money behind that. So I'm really excited to see how that all turns out. All of it? Out. Like he's got no money no, left? I'm pretty oh. sure he's got a few dollars tucked away. No. I mean, I I was like, he's going for broke, huh? That's nice. Well, we'll stop there because like- July is where it starts to get weird because there's not been a lot of stuff confirmed yet, but we'll stop there for now. But I mean, strong, uh, strong start for the summer into the into the deep, deep summer. Strong start. Yeah, there. no, it's, it's it's a decent lineup. There's there's some real stuff sprinkled in there. So yeah. I'm down peppered, with that. as we say, peppered in there, as we say. Let's look at some. Uh, well, actually, well, look did at I what tell you? Doing? I don't think I told you. I want to talk about Civil War for two seconds here. Sure, sure absolutely. So um, the reviews are coming in about Civil War. It's supposed to be very, very good, right? Good. That's great. Um, yeah, but the thing is, is like, it's not an action movie. They they call it a war movie from the journalism perspective. So, and that's how it works out. And that's how the whole movie is. So it seems really awesome to me with that kind of idea. So, oh, I'm nice. down with that. Um. Oh, yeah. I'm. I mean, look. I just those kind of movies are on my radar always because I just. I, I hope it's non-biased and it's just, it gives you kind of good look. If they're going to do that, then they have to equally represent both sides, which I hope it does. But given, uh, 
given the director's previous films we've been involved in, I'm sure that I'm sure it's going to be a well a well written film. I have no. In I, my own mind, Civil War and Purge are in the same universe. <laughs> Everything should be in the same universe. It's true. Why not? Why not? All right, let's take a look at what's streaming this week. We are at the end of our rotation on HBO Max, and there's only two of us this week, so there'll only be two movies. Mine is The Last Castle. I think I've talked about this somewhat in the near oh, future. So, but... Okay, that's the other movie I was supposed to talk about, actually, oh. and I'm not, I'm not even kidding, um, because Last Castle, so like where I work, we have TVs everywhere, uh-huh. and uh, we can watch whatever we want to in our break room because we have all the channels, and uh, Last Castle is on HBO. And it was one of the ones where I found myself watching it during my lunch break. And I'm like, man, I used to dig this movie a lot. So I actually went yeah. back and watched it the next day, watched the whole movie all the way through. That's what Fucking I do too. And sweet flick, man. It is. It is. Okay. So let me just, so, okay. Directed by Rod Lurie, but Robert Redford, James Gandolfini, Mark Ruffalo, Clifton Collins Jr. And Delroy Lindo. Let's name yep. a few. 2001, the last castle. It is. So Robert Redford, he, he has to go to a military prison yep, because of something. General a general that but like generals don't do like normal prison like the rest of us anyway he gets himself thrown in gem pop and then he organizes uh he just wants to do his time and get out see his grandchild it's a little more complicated than that he is at james game james gandolfini is the is the prison commander and of course they clash and then he organizes this whole insurrection but we're on his side so we follow it and it is one of those movies i think for a lot of people completely flew under the radar and it's such a shame because yeah, it's a great movie. movie yeah uh, I really dig Last Castle. It's one of the movies I can I turn on and then I just turn over and listen to it because it's so many great people are talking. I love their voices. So yeah, no, it's it's a good one, man. I actually like that's one of the ones that, like I'm glad I caught it and I was like I'm gonna watch the rest of this movie because I dig it. It's got a hell of an ending too. It's like one of those endings that you don't you don't forget the long time. No, but. it's it's like it's not perfect, but it's memorable. And I, it's, that's that's a good but that's a good praise is saying it's memorable because oh, some yeah. movies these days just aren't memorable whatsoever. So yeah, I'm glad that I'm glad that you checked it out again. You you liked it. Um, yeah, I've always been a big fan of that one with Robert Redford. But and you chose, and I got to say, you said your favorite Pulp Fiction by Quentin Tarantino, John Travolta, Uma Thurman, Samuel Jackson, Bruce Wills, Tim Roth, Phil Lamar, Ving Rhames, Eric Stoltz, to name a few. 1994. Yes, sir. So this is a movie that introduced me personally when I was a young man to um, Quentin Tarantino. Um, and as I've gotten older, obviously I've continued to follow his work. You know, he's very distinct with the kind of movie he makes. He's very selective on who he casts and for certain reasons. So, um, I've been a Tarantino fan ever since then. I think Pulp Fiction is an incredible movie. Um, one of the movies that still holds up very well. If you're good with language, you'll enjoy it very much. And, uh, I think, I think Pulp Fiction, I mean, listen, it's a little bit long. It's told in a completely crazy storyline. Uh, it's not linear at all, and once you piece together what's actually happening in the order that it's supposed to have happened, you're like, "Whoa, that's a really good idea." So, I think it's pretty cool. That's a good. So, that, that's a good favorite movie to have. Um, a lot yeah. of, and I, I was I was really kind of like when you first told me that I was like, "Okay, that that movie's got some substance to it." It's, it's not like someone's like Iron Man from 2007. Get get out of here with that nonsense. Also, but, the original Iron Man, <laughs> a good fucking movie. It is, but it's not best movie. It's not like it should not be number one on your list. No, it like, never. None of them should be. But yeah, Pulp Fiction is a good movie by a good director who knows how to tell a story, especially in that nonlinear fashion. That just kind of what's it called? Like when you Tarantino something, it's like a nonlinear fashion. Yeah, it's just I've always been Pulp Fiction with uh, Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs. Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, those are two like Tar- I could watch those all day, baby. It's it's the other one. Like Kill Bill to me is a little weird. I've just I've never really fallen in with like the so. Kill Bill was never my favorite, but I have a buddy of mine who thinks Kill Bill was like the be all end all movie. And listen, I respect it. It's good. It's just not my favorite Tarantino. Obviously, Pulp Fiction is, but like I put it behind, um, I put Kill Bill behind, um, God, Inglorious Bastards and Django. So, like, at best, it would ever be his fourth or fifth place. So. And we know it's, it's behind Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because I think Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is fucking incredible. I think I, think I agree with you. That was movie. that was a damn good one. You know, I I was going to talk to you. Maybe we should do one episode, like a B episode. Oh, one, like, let me talk about Tarantino. Tarantino. Yeah, yeah. Just, we'll, just rank the Tarantino films. I mean, amen. But that's a good one, man. Pulp Fiction, and I, I have a special screening. I don't want to talk about it yet because, like, some I'm supposed to have some special guests in the special screening at one of the AMC's. So I'm I'm hoping. 
I won't talk about afterwards, but I'm hoping it's going to be a good time because we're, I'm going to dress up like Sam, like Sam Jackson. <laughs> I'm going to put on a, uh, uh, I'm put on a fro. I'm going to wear a suit and tie. I'm very excited. Um, you're, you're supposed to dress up like your favorite characters from the film. So I'm really looking forward to seeing all these hardcore fans who you they dress, dress up, up like Uma Thurman. I mean, I had to consider heroin. It, maybe I'll, maybe, maybe I will, maybe I will, but do it. Uh, those are available to to stream if you are a subscriber to HBO Max, The Last Castle, and Pulp Fiction for your viewing pleasure. Let's talk about some trailers. Here's a big one, and people have been predicting this for a long time. We knew it was in production. The tra- the teaser just dropped, although we've known it was in production for a while because Michael yep. Keaton is on the up and up, man. It's yep. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice with Michael Keaton, Jenna Ortega, Monica Bellucci, uh, Winona Ryder, Willem Dafoe, Catherine O'Hare, Justin Throw, Burn Gorman. This is a big deal, and I think Roger, you and I are in the same camp with this. Is this is a big deal? But yeah, uh, I'm not I mean, entirely I'm, sure it's going to get. It's, I'm not entirely sure it's going to get the box office it deserves. So I, I mean, I don't know, right? So like, Beetlejuice is one of those iconic cult classic movies. Um, when it came out, like people were like, "What the fuck is this?" And but now it's like, man, Beetlejuice is a cool flick. Like it, the idea behind Beetlejuice really is a cool movie, and I, you know, it's been so long since I watched the original Beetlejuice. So, like, I'm kind of excited to go back and watch that movie, give it, like, a clean, you know, because that's one of the movies, like, since we started doing this podcast all those years ago, like, I've never watched since then to look at it from, like, a slightly more critical eye. And I couldn't tell you the last time I did see it, like, even as an adult, you know what I mean? So I agree. It's, it's just not on my radar. I mean, it, yeah, I, it's, in, it's in the films. It's in the films on my phone. I just, it's a hard one for me to turn over and just listen to while I work because, like, I just... I don't know. It's one of the ones I want to revisit. It's a visual but movie, too. It is. That's the thing. And it's also, like you should is. tell Ridley Scott he should watch it on your phone with you. <laughs> I, what, of all the things that you can you can put your foot in your mouth by saying when you're a big director, but that's got to be one of the dumbest right there. Jeez Louise. But I yeah, I think it's a big deal, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I really hope, especially with some of the returning cast, I really hope this movie gets the, the, the love it deserves. And it's, I have a feeling it's not, it's just, it's just because, you know, look, let me ask you this. Does the younger generation even care? I know I ask this question a lot, but like, do they even care about Beetle? How old does a kid have to be right now to care about Beetlejuice? Uh, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a lot, uh, a whole handful of kids that even know what Beetlejuice is. Um, That's kind of my point. But uh, you know, with their casting choice for young female leads, you know, you have Jenny, uh, Jenna Ortega, and like she's as big of a young star as you can be right now um, on the lady side. So. You know, she's got her own pool, so. And, oh, it's weird about just General Ortega. I knew something jogged my memory is I talked to someone to this this week. I work with a lot. There's a lot of interesting people on, on, on my film, and after it's done, I will, um, I'll talk about why. But um, apparently her and Barrera, there might be a chance they're going back to Scream. Good. So, I mean, like, yeah, I don't think you should. I think that was a hot button. I think that was, like, done in, impulsively, and, like, maybe it was a bad idea for the studio to let, let that happen, but. I'm surprised, but yes, Jenna Ortega, as you were trying to say with your female lead, she is one that not only girls follow and like some of the younger generation, but she's also very good. Yeah. So that's I'm very excited that this movie is getting made. Although again, I just I really hope it doesn't bomb because then we're just not going to get some more of those movies along that same vein that I think we should get. But uh, let's talk about Bad Boys Ride or Die. Bad for boys. Bad for Bad Boys for uh, Will Smith, Martin Lawrence, Vanessa Hudgens, Alexander Ludwig. Paola Nunez, Eric Dane, Eon Grufford, Jacob Scipio, Tiffany Haydish, Joe Pantoliano, to name a few. It's a feature, and this one's special for me. Um, it was the last. It was the last month and a half of 2023 for me. No, 2022 and into 2023 until about October. I worked on this. It was you know I was in Atlanta working on it. It was a big deal huge budget but it's a very big so like i can see watching the trailer was a delight for me because i all the things that we that i remember paying for all the weird all the weird locations that we paid for like i saw some of them I'm like, oh that's why they that's why they wanted to pay for an ice cream shop like that's why they wanted that delicious so, ice cream um yeah i'm i'm very excited for this this has more of a it's a big deal for me because i've always liked bad boys and i got to work on and i got to talk to jerry bruckheimer on this show so Huh. On this, we always, we call them all shows, but on this movie, I got to talk to Jared Bruckheim for a few minutes. That was a, f- a wonderful conversation. 
But yeah, I'm, I'm I'm psyched about this. How are you, Roger, not having the same kind of level of interest that I do? I mean, obviously, I'm at least slightly excited because it's a Bad Boys movie. And I actually really liked the last Bad Boys movie. I thought they did much better, told a much better story, a much more cohesive story than they did in Bad Boys 2. Um, so I liked it. I mean, they're likable characters, fun, action, fun, stupid guy action movie. Um, so here's the thing, though. They really did back themselves in the corner with the names or with the the titles of this films because like look this should be bad boys for life, life of right? course of course of course it fucking should yeah. like bro you screwed this up <laughs> well they didn't i can tell you because this was they something didn't I learned. expect it to have no. another one no, they they didn't that. they didn't expect the third one to do nearly the box but if you remember that movie did fantastic in it the did. box office it did Maybe it was released at the. It was released in January. There wasn't, you know, they 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 pushed it and, but it did very well. It was also so much better than Bad Boys Two. <laughs> yeah, um, the other part of it is too is like this will be the resurrection of Will Smith, right? Like this will be sure his first one of the things. Absolutely, since, yeah. Since uh, you know, to get his PR back going, right? Ever since he slapped Chris Rock. Wait, is this the first movie since the slap? His first starring role, yeah. Interesting. I didn't realize that. Okay, okay. Well, I mean, look, it's an idiot-proof one. You know, like, it's <laughs> yeah. got an audience. It'll make all the money. It's going to going to have it, so... When was Emancipation? Was that the same time frame? It was the same time frame. It, here's the thing. Emancipation was already done by the time he'd yeah. slapped him in the face. Uh, also, Emancipation wasn't really that good. I was just going to say that, like, they love to... I remember watching the articles, but, oh, Emancipation snubbed because Will Smith... Like, no, no. No. Emancipation was bad. <laughs> There's no snub. Emancipation nope. stinks. It wasn't... It just, <laughs> so. it just wasn't a good movie, but... They love people love to studios love to use any kind of excuse they got. So. Also, Ben Foster, again, talking about people who are just typecast, plays a damn fine, dirty old racist. So Yes, he does. Look, those paychecks cash just like any other paycheck cashes. Right. So. Listen, playing being a bad guy, <sighs> buddy, there's money in that. There is indeed. But I'm actually kind of glad just for one second. I'm actually kind of in a weird way glad that that happened to Will Smith because now we're getting movies that like I know we're getting iRobot 2. We're getting Hancock 2 movies. Well, I never bright to give I, me bright to. Well, that's what that's not the one like I hope we get that. That's not on his upcoming. But I've we've seen things about that. We've seen like bright Two talked about before. I mean, um, they've been talking about Bright Two since a year after the first one. Yeah, it was actually that not was a, in 2018. Was it? I thought it was like 17, 18 or 19. Yeah, okay, that's what interesting. That's a that's a thing. Is like I'm, I'm glad that Will Smith is like hopefully starting to be on the up and up again because he is among other things a very good actor. Sure. So you know, I'd like to get him back. Just remember the same night he slapped Chris Rock in the face, he won an Oscar for King Richard, which is a great movie. <laughs> Excellent movie too. It's a yes. great movie. Yeah, so I'm. I mean, I'm excited for Bad Boys Four, Ride or Die, but Bad let's, Boys. <laughs> noted. Uh, House of the Dragon season two with Matt Smith, uh, Emma Darcy, Olivia Cook, Reese Ifans, Graham McTavish. It's a series, of course. You know, it's a prequel to Game of Thrones. What are we thinking about this? Oh yeah, brother. Like, look. I mean, look. Was was uh, was the la- the first season perfect? No, but did it do everything you wanted it to do? Yes, I think so. And <laughs> and Matt Smith was stellar. Oh, that. hell yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. And it's they traverse like how many years did we go? We Like 25 years or something. We yeah, we went like 20 years in the span of not that far of episodes. So, yeah, like, so they, they jumped time quite a significant amount. I Look, I my, my and I know you and Chris don't fully agree. But my thing is they're going to end up with they're going to end up with Jamie stabbing the um Jamie stabbing the king. That's how this is going to end. But that, that's just me. I mean, it's I just... I just don't think that, that that helps them do that. Like, why put yourself in that corner? However, so one other thing to talk about Game of Thrones stuff for just a second. Um, they did um, finally announce some stuff about their other spinoff that they're doing, the actual spinoff, not the the alleged Jon Snow one, which will probably never happen. Oh, West of uh, Westeros or whatever? Yeah, okay. Where um, <clears throat> the one with um, the Sir Duncan... In the Sir Duncan and Egg, whatever that one's called, like they finally um, made those people. Oh, okay, like, nice. Picked those people. I forget the official name of that. Sir yeah, let's see if I can Duncan. find. That's weird because I'm I'm now very curious. Sir Duncan the Tall. Yeah, that's uh, Duncan the Tall is one of the characters from um, the Game of Thrones lore. Um, he's getting his own spinoff. So yeah, okay. The Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. That's the name of it. Follows Sir Duncan the Tall and his liege egg. Oh, okay. Okay. That's anything yeah. in that universe has serious potential because I mean, I don't, but I mean, is there really, 
I know we just talked about on the episode we talked about the Netflix um, uh, damsel. We talked about what's, and then we ended up talking about Game of like Game Game of Thrones might go down in history as like one of the biggest you drop the ball moments in in in, in television history. Like absolutely, sure. it might go down. It's like I still am angry thinking about that. <laughs> so I wonder. I just I'd love to know what's changed. Because wait, season one of House of the Dragon was that? That was 2022, wasn't it? Yep. That'll be almost two years. Okay, so here's the thing: this one take these things take a long time to film, and there's a heavy amount of CGI with the dragon stuff. That's true. That's very true. So, uh, yeah. So I'm. I mean, look, it's safe to say I think everyone's excited, and the first season was very. I don't say there's anything to write home about, but it's good. It's. It it doesn't. If you like Game of Thrones, there's no reason that. This shouldn't have done it for you. I agree, a hundred percent. Yeah, that's that's as a good a way to look at it as any. But those are our trailers are all available on our social. If you check them, if you check them out, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Bad Boys Four, Ride or Die, and House of the Dragon season two. Let's talk about the, <laughs> the Easter movie of the year, <laughs> Godzilla, right. Cross Kong, The New Empire. Like some yeah, particulars yeah, out of the way. All right, let's look at some Rotten Tomatoes first. We have an audience score, sorry, a tomato meter score of 54%, which is, you know, probably somewhat accurate. Sure. Um, the audience score, 92, probably less accurate. <laughs> Just saying, but. And let's what look at some. What a fucking disparity that is. I agree with you. I agree. And let's talk about some Metacritic with. Uh, okay, so Metacritic, 47. That's probably not a bad place to stick this. Nah, let I mean, me look. If it was dead nuts at 50, I'd be like perfect. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. So a few points of, you know, for or against. That's that's fine. So let's talk about some Godzilla versus Kong. Sorry, cross Kong. Hit we us have. with some particulars, sir. Here are some Rebecca Hall, Kylie Hoddle, Brian Tyree Henry, Dan Stevens, Alex All Ferns. Right. And that's it for the humans that you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's right. Uh it's a directed by Adam Wingard, which is a returning director to this franchise. I think it's important. He did the note. last one, right? He did. He he, he did. Okay. Written by Terry Rossio and Jeremy Slater. It's important. Terry Rossio always sticks out in my mind because he was one of the Pirates of the Caribbean writers all okay. the way through, pretty much. And that's Wait, was it the good pirates or the yes. bad pirates? No, no, no. The, the 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 first the first one and parts of the others. Okay. Um, he gets credit for, but I feel like the first two. I'll give him the first two is good. By the way, I think I saw a story this past week about how Disney has completely they're they're having a reboot, like a complete reboot of Pirates of the Caribbean. Nothing to do with the others at. Like at all, it's a complete de- de- departure for good or for bad. I don't know how to take that, but for good or for bad, now so don't use the music. I will agree with you on that, but you know they're going to because that's yeah. the most iconic thing. That's about the best that. part of it, yeah, exactly. All right, Godzilla cross Kong the Empire. Roger, what's, what's this installment about? Uh, Godzilla and Kong. All right, let's move to score it and an empire that they create. <laughs> they have they have tea together. They unionize the labor force. Yes, they and- do. All right. So let's talk about the past for one second. So Godzilla 2014, big disappointment to a lot of people. It gave I fucking us fucking love that movie though. Yeah, I think it's so good. I never hated it as much as other people. I don't. I don't think it's a ten, but it's certainly not a zero. It's closer to ten than it is zero. I think I'm willing to say that, but I don't know how much closer. But yeah, I thought that was an okay start to this 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 universe that they're kind of creating here. Um, <clears throat> uh, kick ass. What's his name? Aaron Taylor Johnson. Yep. Was a star. He didn't come back kick for any of them. I'm just referring to him as just kick ass. All right, kick ass. He came. Um, what Walter White? We know how he got cancer. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> um, uh, we know about that, what's his guy? What's his actor's name? I forget. Oh, Cranston, right? Brian Cranston. Yeah, yeah. And so we we know how that started. But important. The important part is they got the look of Godzilla right, and I think it was miles ahead of the what, what was the last Godzilla movie before that? The '98 with Matthew Broderick. Oh yeah, movie sucked. Yeah, that movie is. You know, it goes down in history for sucking. Um, and then we got King of Monsters. Was that? No, no. Kong, actually. Skull Island was two, three years, two and a half years later. Yeah. Kong Skull Island, which was. I like I liked, uh, Skull Island. I did, too. I thought that was well above what I expected. Uh, Sam Sam Jackson. Um, what's his name? Um, Loki. Who is that? Tom Hiddleston. Yeah, Hiddleston. I think it was a, it was a very well written. Oh, Brie Larson, too, wasn't it? Yeah, was yeah, yeah. I actually forgot she's in that movie. A uh, very, very good movie. An introduction to Kong, and then we get uh, Godzilla: King of Monsters. I think that was later, twenty nineteen ish. Yep. Which I that as, so far that's my favorite installment 
in this entire universe so far is King of Monsters. I think King of Monsters. Your is the favorite best. installment is that, huh? Yes, because you know, you know what gets me is the is the Vera Farmiga and the Kyle Chandler ah. the, the mother. Yeah, I had the mother sacrifice in the end. It gets me every time. Um, but it actually does an okay thing where it starts. See that movies don't usually acknowledge. You know, like the Transformers or any of these big monsters fighting type movies, they never acknowledge the amount of damage that's been done to like civilian populations. We're going to so, talk about that today, too. Yeah. Again, <laughs> yeah, we are. But that one starts with the aftermath of the God- of the Godzilla from 2014 fight of how a family lost a child and how sure. devastating that was. That's where Millie Bobby Brown steps in as the older sister for two grieving parents who are, are dealing with 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 Monarch. Everything. Is yeah. Um, yeah, so that's how, but that's my that's my favorite of these. I think Mothra's sacrifice to bring back Kong, or to bring back Godzilla, so he can again fight and win the day. It's it's just there's a lot of good in that movie. That's also been the most expensive one, I think. I think that one was like two hundred. the 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 budget was like two hundred, and there was so many people. Bradley Bradley, I drink my own pee. Whitford was was in it. Um, a ton of people that we didn't. That, that was the end of Ken Watanabe as his um, dramatic Tyrone the, uh, Lannister. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, Charles Charles Dance, I think. I yeah, said. Charles Dance. I couldn't remember his, his real name. <laughs> like when he kept saying, he kept looking at the camera and saying, long live the king as some yeah. like weak nod yeah, to, to Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> that was like peak Game of Thrones time. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, yeah. And then we got, what was after that? That was Godzilla vs. Kong? No. No. Yeah. No, that's yeah, right. Yeah, that was Godzilla vs. Kong. Because then they get Mecha Godzilla. <laughs> where they, they beat they're, his ass. That's the one where they where, where they fight in the ocean, Godzilla and Kong, and like yeah, they, and they drown point, like seven U.S. aircraft carriers. Like carriers, like, yeah. <laughs> and then they're in Taiwan, and yeah, it's just let's just a fucking mess. So at that point, just that movie alone with the with the U.S. military members that had to be killed, um, with Taiwan that's just been smashed. We're talking like millions of people dead like collateral yeah. damage well, we're talking about that again today <laughs> that's my favorite thing to think about it's like when whenever they smash through a building it's okay add uh forty thousand more deaths to the death so in, in this, this movie where at one point a top half of a building is wrapped up by a whip made of some bone. sort of bone, bone yeah. with a weird icicle spear on the end of it <laughs> wrapped around it's just hurled at somebody like those people were fucking dead dead gone They're just dead like like millions of people never be found correct they like, gone which brings us to this one in 2024 so here's the thing i want to say about this just as like a, a little snapshot re- 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 remark here is even though some of these might be silly i don't think any of them are bad no i don't think so either but I mean, like this movie's not without problems, and oh no, no, talk of, about that here in a, in of a course. But I mean, let's talk about another. Well, hang on before before okay. we dig into the movie itself, I want to ask you one question because like there is an Apple TV accompaniment show called Monarch. Oh, I I've not gotten into so Monarch. I have not much. checked out either. Apparently, though, it's got a high production value, and it stars Kurt Russell. So, like, it might be worth checking yeah. out. I wouldn't. So, have, I didn't want to check it out until you just said it stars Kurt Russell. I'm like, okay, maybe I should give that a go because, yeah. Yeah, like it's got real like star power in it. So, because I always thought Kurt Russell brought like he brought the big boy pants to the Fast and Furious franchise, which sure, which, which before Kurt Russell never had big boy pants. No. <laughs> so I mean, that's except maybe the first one. That's the only one I ever took seriously was the first one, but. Um. Yeah, but so Kurt Russell might might do it, but I've never gotten into Monarch. Is there anyone else? Is like Brian Tyree Henry or anything? Or I, you know, I don't know. I really don't know. Well, it might be worth checking out think. because I really do enjoy these these Godzilla. Well, here's the thing. I'm, films. I'm, I'm that weird point in my life right now where I just finished a show. Um, because I finished up Masters of the Air last week, and I'm about oh. to finish up season two of um of Reacher. So like, I don't have any episodic shows that I'm watching or trying to catch up on. So. That'll be one where, like, hey, maybe I'm going to slot this in. We're going to watch an episode or two and see how it goes. All right. Let me know what you think. And I'll. Uh, so the only other show I got that I still haven't finished yet is the uh, season one of Beef on Netflix. Okay. So, okay. Which is a great fucking show, by the way. One of the shows Netflix does very, very well. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Check it out. So that brings us current. And um, so what's going on in this one, Roger? Uh, the New Empire. So, I mean, we pick up an undisclosed amount of time after Godzilla versus Kong. Um, I assume, though, it's only supposed to be a couple of years later. You know, like, look, everybody's a little bit older. The kid from the 
the the girl, the deaf girl, I forget her name off the top of my head, is a couple years older. You can tell she's actually growing up some, and that's that's good. Um, the other Gia. part of Gia, Gia yes, yeah. Gia. So she's growing up, and you know the world's kind of in like, hey, you know, this is a real thing now. Like we have a warning system, much like you know, remember Pacific Rim, where like they know where the portals are. Yeah, they of course. have things guarding them. You know, Godzilla is kind of like our our you know top of the world protector, and um, you got Kong down in the Hollow Earth, just kind of doing his thing, being all sad and lonely, and kind of running stuff down there. So that's that's where we pick up, and we go very rapidly into some wild shit. <laughs> So like, what what else do you expect in one? Like, I'm not saying that is like a detriment, but not, not out of the realm of like anything different here. I do. I do want to point out some stuff before I start to really like dig into this movie a little bit. So obviously we are talking about a movie about two giant sized monsters fighting each other. Right. Like we have, of course, <laughs> we have a guy, you know, we have Godzilla, the ultimate kaiju dinosaur dragon monster hybrid whatever and you know we have a 300 foot gorilla you know earth's greatest hero or whatever he's supposed to be right so we suspend a lot of belief in this stuff right but like through through this movie we go through a phase where we not only go we spend we spend 90 percent of the movie in the hollow earth or or hear me out below the hollow earth hollow earth what must, be, must be the hollower earth okay more hollow earth yeah whatever that's about <laughs> like I, I asked grayson earlier like how far down can you go like at what levels do you hit the core no one seems to know so <laughs> like there is no answer here you can just go down and there are just more worse fucking monsters down there <laughs> i agree um but like the one other thing too, and we'll we'll I'll dig into the actual plot of this, but like most of this movie involves Godzilla hardly doing anything except going and whipping the shit out of other Titans and just absorbing their power. Right? Like doing a steroid cycle, getting himself amped up because he knows something big is brewing. But like 90% of the story that we follow is Kong here. So that, that's if Kong isn't your thing, like this movie's not really for you because this is this is a Kong movie and Godzilla's here. Well, right? if, if you've been on board this whole time, you're well, going to that, be on that's board the thing, this. right? But I'm surprised that Godzilla is the first person listed, you know, in the name. Well, they got to keep the name similar for the other. I, th- I think so. You want you want to keep things uniform. I mean, you could just call it the new empire and not put either one of their names in it. Ah, that'd be a tough no but i think the name is half the battle with studios it's like okay, okay what do we call well, it i mean sure but yeah so i mean that that's something that i thought was kind of weird like we're supposed to suspend a lot of belief and at some point we're going farther down into the earth <laughs> so well i mean like, is it any different than any of the other films we've gotten no in this no it's it's not but, but that's the thing know. is so it's just it's the thing is, these are, these are all incredibly silly, but they're framed in kind of, I don't want to say real world, so, I mean, well, but they're, kind they're of a real like world some scenario. some semblance of our world, Let's right? say, okay, some semblance of what we consider to be reality, but so is like Transformers and yeah. Pacific Rim and all those, you know. That being of, said, though, this is one of the worst versions of re- our reality to live in a major city. Of course, because you're dead. <laughs> you're fucking dead. <laughs> dead. <laughs> and your city is destroyed for the next 50 years. It's unlivable. Well, so, I mean, like, look, how many more landmarks can they take out? Right? That's the real question. Well, the old movies used to do that in, like, a tasteful way. Like, oh, they're coming closer to this. And, like, you just know it's coming. But I well, I, I understand what so, you're saying. So let yeah. me let me dig into the movie a little bit. So, like, you know, we're a couple years later. We know where, like, all the portals are from Hollow Earth to the surface so we got them all guarded we got them all monitored we always know when something's coming which is great until we find out oh wait there's this whole unexplored realm with more portals <laughs> that just aren't being used you know convenient you know yeah it's it's weird that, that i have to look at that and be like this is the story that we came up with huh like i don't understand we want them to fight more monsters together and yes fuck yes i do too because that's what i need in my life but like, come on. <laughs> come on now. Well, I actually, I don't, I disagree with you in this respect. I think the script is actually quite good here. Maybe the content of what we're given and like the visuals kind of lag behind, but I don't think the script is is bad by any means. 
Well, visually, let's talk visually for just a second. Visually, there's nothing really here that we hadn't seen before besides the Ice Titan. That's um, fair. Okay, that's... Which, you know, like, we, we'd seen all that stuff before. We'd seen the Ice Titan, everything besides the Ice Titan, which... Um, I forget the, let me look at the name of because they're, like, they're they're all named now and they're all super weird names. <laughs> well, I mean, they but they would be coming from old tribes. They definitely would be names that we wouldn't recognize today. But yes, they they do have their names. But yeah, I mean, like we end up, you know, Gaia is having some issues. Gia is having some issues with um, being away, being the only person left, and you know, Rebecca Hall is having this hard time being like single mom doing this like trying to do all this monarch work and you know she you know enlists brian tyree's Hen- brian tyree henry's character to like hey i need your help with some stuff and he's like finally because you know besides just hanging out getting sent through hollow earth you know like he doesn't have any street cred i guess is what his real problem is oh he's the podcaster with that and like he just wants to he knows he's right and he is right and we know he's right but he's got to tell the world that he's right about this stuff. yeah and no one here's the thing everything he tells everybody nobody believes him that he had any part of it which i think is kind of funny yeah i agree that's hilarious as well but i mean that's that's the part like if you've noticed so king of monsters i think is where like the the castles was the biggest and it's kind of been whittled down since mm-hmm <laughs> You know, we never even revisited Kick-Ass and his family with, um, what's her face? Who's the, ah, Scarlet Witch. What's an Olsen? Olsen, yeah. Like, you'd think those two would be notable enough that you might want to bring them back, although maybe they both said no. I don't, or or the studio just said, we're going in a different direction. We'll pay you out for your contract, whatever. We hired you for two or three movies. It's fine. So it's been a three-year time shift. So, okay, th- that, that makes sense because G is about three years older, I think. Yeah. yeah. So that's like, that's one super measurable way is like, always kids are very measurable. Yeah. <clears throat> um. But we, the cast list has been whittled down, and we're, we're we we are sticking with one of the core elements of these films is the family. We're sticking with Rebecca Hall and Ice her, Titan's name is Shimo. Oh, Shimo. Oh yeah, that, that that makes sense. And I did think it's kind of interesting how we did kind of shift to this is a this is more Kong story than it is Godzilla it is, story for, sh- for sure. Uh, which makes me wonder: is Kong testing more popular than Godzilla at this point? For I, I mean, if that's what so they're, I, I think legitimately him. he's more of a relatable character. You know what I mean? Well, I agree in some ways, in other ways I disagree. But <clears throat> how how do you mean it? And I'll, I'll tell you why I agree and disagree. Well, so here's the thing: Godzilla himself has always been the lone wolf kind of guy, right? Correct. But Kong, you always see him like with a family element. He's more humanized, especially after the last movie. You know, like has a connection with people. Well, like he, actually, he talks to Gia. Well, he, yep, he tries to and he tries to protect them and all that stuff. So I always thought that was. I think that's that's probably why. Now listen, is that a hundred percent? I don't. I don't know. But I could definitely see because listen, Godzilla is you know, and even in this war, in this like realm that they live in, he's a um, killing machine, right? Like he's the muscle. Like n- not saying that Kong is a slouch by any means, but like he's the guy that's supposed to like come in and like he's our protector. He's the killing machine. So yeah, that I, makes and, sense. And the Godzilla is not, or excuse me, Kong is not that. And one of the, I think it's fun. So one of the IMAXs that I went to to see this, it's a, uh, it's got a big poster. But I haven't seen the poster since. I've only kind of seen it outside this IMAX. It is. It's called the Grove, but uh, it's got a poster of Godzilla and Kong both running at you as you're looking at the poster, like, like almost like a buddy drama. <laughs> Sure. I thought, wouldn't buddy that be cop. funny if we had like a buddy, buddy cops running away from explosion? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Remember? Uh, do you remember Ghost and Torment? You bet. Yeah. I, I made. I listen. I created that show. Yeah, you did. Uh, I laughed for weeks about that. But yeah, it's it's a, because like I don't. The poster is a good thing to do. I mean, in these big ass monster movies, like you got to get the poster right. I think too, because you just you got to draw people important in. Too. Yeah, yeah. But the poster, I think, is important. And the thing that they nailed here is like. And I think what what Chris said, Chris couldn't join us tonight, but he gave us a very quick because he's in Sweden yodeling. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm saying so. He, he gave us a really quick. They don't um, have movies in Sweden. Correct, but he said it was a fun movie. Um, it, it was it was a fun movie, but maybe a little less when measured to Godzilla minus one, which I think we should mention real quick. But so I mean, look, <laughs> if you want to talk about Godzilla minus one, like, look, dude, I'm here for it because that movie fucking ruled. But. Like, and that's unfair to this movie. <laughs> I, I think so. It is. 
However, so it, it, Godzilla with, minus with one proximity is a, of release though. It's right. Sure, there. I mean it makes sense. Like, look, Godzilla minus one got like legitimately Oscar buzz, and it as deservedly so, and won an Oscar by the way for special effects, uh, with a budget legitimately one tenth the size of this movie. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> that's a fact. This, yeah, yeah. Budget for this movie is about one hundred forty-five to one hundred fifty. So, what was Godzilla? Fifteen minus one, fifteen million. Yeah, so one tenth. tenth of it took home an Oscar for it because good for them. And has the Godzilla minus one? While like this movie focuses a good bit on the human element, Godzilla minus one gives us the best version of a human element in Godzilla that we have ever had. Right? Are you talking about the pilot? Yeah, in his yeah. little pseudo family. Yeah, his little his his arc of redemption. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, I agree. But like, I mean, the King of Monsters didn't have a dissimilar arc, or with you know with uh, with the mom and with Mothra. Yeah, but I no. mean, it was never at the level of that. Sure, but and I, mean, I, look, I agree look, with you. Though, sure, like sure. I said, though, it's unfair to compare that movie, this movie, to each other. Sure, and I and I and I totally understand that. What I hoped Godzilla one minus one would do is is, is kind of reinvigorate people's love for Godzilla. Because this is one of those franchises that, like, gen- d- different generations love it for different reasons. But this is a beloved, you know, Godzilla is a time-tested thing that film is like, that's a movie thing. Godzilla works. But you're, uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with that 100%. So I'm glad that Godzilla Minus One did win an Oscar because I'm sure that's doing amazing things for the box office for this movie. Maybe, maybe a little more than it would have done. Maybe a whole lot well, this, more. But This movie is making some good money for itself. So like, it's, I think so. It's already and it's beat out some other stuff. So I saw a 9.30 a.m. IMAX show Ooh. yesterday. Yeah, morning movies. Love it. I Dude, dude. some some weeks I go to a 9 a.m. Saturday movie. Like, you know how amazing that is? To get yeah. To be no, drunk. like, I've been clamoring for it. <laughs> like, I got, a, I got a taste of it a couple of summers ago. And, like, bro, I fucking love it. It's amazing, dude. If I if I'm a morning person, I I'm up, you know, six thirty, six forty five. Yeah. I'm ready. Especially I have my coffee and I'm yeah. Man, I'm ready. I got my coffee. I'm ready to go. And it's those nine a.m. Saturday IMAX movies are like this is where I live, baby. Right here. Give it to like, me all. It, yeah. Legitimately, if they ran that stuff through the winter time, like it would make my life so much easier. Like on my days off, I could take my kids to school. I could go to the movies, be home by lunchtime, do whatever <laughs> else I wanted to do. Exactly. Oh just, my god! I don't so know why perfect. they don't. I don't know why they don't do. Especially the Ohio well, Valley like, Mall. Look, they won't cater for me. <laughs> well, no, I but you start think, asking. Like, but can you, I just you show up here at nine thirty a.m. <laughs> can you please just play this movie at nine thirty, please? Yeah, um, I'll be here. It's, it's cool. Uh, I don't. The thing is, in that place, I don't think you you you, you ever get more than five, four or five tickets, even in the best of times, sold for that show. But no, in the mornings, nah. But I mean, but 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 but, but here it's just, but even but with the same, the same kind of look is like even here with the nine a.m. showings, like the mall is, is somewhat packed here. I'm not I'm not kidding you. It's like one of the twelve malls within a five mile radius is like there are like hundreds of people at nine a.m. doing shopping. So there's not that at the Ohio Valley Mall or the, or at the Highlands. There's not at nine a.m. hundreds of people shopping, but it's also. You know, one thirtieth the population size that LA is. So yeah, sure, I understand that. It's, it's, 30th, as, that's as, as a well. generous estimate. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. But I mean, I'm just saying, like, I love and and like it. Just I, I love those nine AM movies. AMC, please don't stop doing those. Please do not stop doing those. But yeah, I start doing them at more theaters. <laughs> fair enough. But yeah, that's that's where I watch it. But they, it was my 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 point is it was the second weekend Saturday nine AM. It was sold out. Wow, really? If if I hadn't bought my ticket days before, just because I was just because I was messing around my app, I'll just get my ticket now. If I hadn't got my ticket, when so there, it looked like there was you know three three fifty seats in there. When I bought it, maybe four or five seats were occupied. I think I bought it Thursday night for Saturday morning, and by the time I came, I was like, "Holy crap, this is!" There. I asked the ushers, "Like, is this sold?" I was like, "Yep, our nine a.m.s and nine thirty a.m.s do very well here." I'm like, "That's amazing, good for you guys." But so it's still. With that kind of box office, it's still going strong. All, all this long-winded explanation to say it's still getting decent business. If, if it's getting a nine thirty a.m. crowd, it's absolutely getting you know four, five, six, seven, nine, ten o'clock crowd. Oh, of course, so, of course it is. I hope this movie starts to trickle because these are better. Here's the thing: is like the let's talk about other big franchises for one second, just where they sit. Sure. I mean. We didn't get more than two Pacific Rims. We're never going to get more than two Pacific Rims. So and that's unfortunate, right? Because like the first Pacific Rim, I think, is a great big monster movie, right? The I second so. one is a pile of shit. Like it's awful. 
absolutely awful. Well, but I mean, look at so let's look at some like the other one of the other big notable ones that I love, Transformers, is like that also started off strong and then ended up terrible. Bad. Just awful. Here's the thing, though, has been reset to okay again. If they continue, it, and we're getting one this year, aren't we? Transform. Uh, well, one. we're getting an animated, animated. movie. Chris Hemsworth animated, is the so voice of Prime, so we'll see. Yeah, uh, but as a, so these these big franchises is I noticed when I was rewatching this one is like this one's always been consistent, like never a ten, but not a three. You know, like always somewhere you know four, five, six, seven range, right up in that. It just kind of consistently sits there, and they're fun, and they they do exactly what Godzilla vs Kong <laughs> you'd expect is big fights, big scale cities, cool. You know, Kong's got an axe, which is cool. It absorbs things. There's yep. all kinds of titans, and there's a monkey whipping well, things with. And he gets, you know, <laughs> he joins the Marvel universe and getting part of the Hulkbuster armor. Amen. So, like, you know, we we made the jokes for weeks about his Infinity Gauntlet. It's not the Infinity Gauntlet, but it is a Hulkbuster piece of armor. Right, like and it, it works. The this thing comes fine. in, it flies, it locks onto his arm. You know, gives him a shield. Even injects him with some shit. You know, like gets him ramped up with some steroids. Because hell yeah, brother. <laughs> Why but not? It, 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 well, okay. I so let's talk about the movie in another fashion. But speaking of that, is like, let's talk about. Can we talk about Dan Stevens' character for one second? Sure, Ace Ventura. He's amazing. I love Dan Stevens. Um, <laughs> I love that he actually calls him Ace Ventura. He does. He, he does <laughs> like, indeed. I laughed at that. Um, he was, I think he was Beast in, Beauty and the, in the remake of Beauty and the Beast. Um, was he? I think so. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But he. But my favorite version of him has been to date is um, uh, Alexander Lemtov in um, Eurovision, <laughs> the fire song. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he sings Lion of Love. and um, oh, There's no gay people in Russia. No gay people. Um that's but like I love this guy, but can I just ask you? Why, sure. Is he a, is his profession dentist for for titans? So I don't know. I so I think he's like the titan, not not dentist. But I think it's a little broader than that. I think he's like the veterinarian. <laughs> I was like, how does he know how to do this? How does anyone know how to do this? Yeah, it's very strange. Like I love that he's got like secret top level government clearance too. Yeah, it's just very strange. <laughs> but I mean, that, that's with the Rebecca Hall character, it works. That's what I was going to say. Is I've heard a lot of disparaging about the Dan Stevens character. I'm like, why? Yeah, he's are fine. People, he's fine in this universe. Like, it's perfect. Actually, why do people have such a problem with this guy? The only problem with him being Australian or whatever nationality. I'm pretty sure he's supposed to be Australian, right? Is he never calls anybody a cunt? Well, because I mean, like, look, then you know he's not Australian. Fair, but because that's what they do. I don't know if he was supposed to be. I mean, they did. I don't know. They talk about having a relationship in college, and I don't know. I don't know. But I think it works here. And I think, you know, especially with the Rebecca Hall character in the family, the the link to Gia and Gia's link to Kong. Mm-hmm. I still say Gia has the best in, uh, what was it? It was Godzilla versus Kong, where she walks up to, remember Godzilla's, fr- uh, Kong is freaking out on the ship yep. um, as he's being transported. And Kong's she walked down. And she walks out in the rain and gives and like extends her hand, her finger, and Tom or Kong like puts it like that's a beaut that that's arguably the best moment of that movie by like, bar none, hands down. And like they keep the 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 Iwa tribe in in there with you know in the, in in the form of Gia and like that 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 all comes from Skull Island and the the lore that we've known for Kong for 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 decades and decades. Yeah. I like that part of it. I'm glad that we've kept this going through. Because it's, I think that's important is like, you know, I don't think of, you know, that's the, that's the Anne Darrow effect to me. The, the woman and the king and the, you know, tra- the traditional King Kong telling, um, that's the Anne Darrow of like her, she's able to calm and soothe the beast. Mm-hmm. That's what, the, that's what that character does. Like, this is what I think that the weird, weirdly that they're, they're like, they're trying to combine that with this new age version is like the old version with like the, the, the girl being that one who can calm Kong just by her presence and like it that's what i love about it. like it almost for a second very humanizes him like you talked about earlier because it he sees it and he just he calms down a little bit i i just love that and i love that this movie carried into it as as well so um that's one of the things that i really like about this one is the is the, is the keeping of the family aspect which we've gone through a number of cast members so they could have easily just said you know what no we're gonna move on and like ah but I don't know. I don't know. I know you don't feel as strongly about that as I do, but no, no. I, I mean, I really don't. But I mean, listen. I the humanizing people. You know, have, you have to have a human element. You just can't have them just slugging it out, right? Because 
if you don't have some humans trying to like pseudo explain what's going on in this movie, it really is just them fighting other animals. <laughs> well, that's well, that's the thing is that's I like that Rebecca Hall is she's telling all these myths and legends about how we get to the scarred one and and the the, the red monkey with the whip is like I actually didn't hate that explanation, you know. Nor no. as a movie we've talked about weeks past, and you were very upset about with Ghostbusters. I didn't hate that explanation about how that demon came together either. Like I don't. They're finding ways movies that they used to be bad, like spoon feeding you exposition, but they're finding ways to do it more tastefully these days, I think. And it's it's a welcome change of pace is all I'm saying. And f- a large part of this movie is monkeys just slugging it out with each other without yeah. humans, which I kind of dug, actually. It works. Because they had the the mini Kong, which <laughs> kind of acted as the he was the, the bridge on, from what was his name. Hang on. He had a name, right? I, they, I think they just called him Mini Kong. No, but, I gave him a stupider name than that. Um, they probably did. Where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it at? Mm. Well, I'll just keep. I'll just go on. But I, I, I like the, the that little kind of aggressive red Kong is because he's kind of the link between the 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 the, the tribe that's kind of lost their mind and Kong is. And that's the thing about Kong though too is Suko. 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 Okay. Is it's just one of those things that works for him his story because he. Kong has always been searching for family. He's always been looking for his own people and where are they and why is he by himself? And you know, the, the, the last two movies slowly have given him family. And I, and I, I really appreciate that little detail. I don't know if it's a little detail because it's a big part of the plot, but like it's a big part of his plot. Yeah. But for, for me, it's a big deal because damn it. I mean, why not in this universe? Like, I, I don't, I don't mean that as a stupid arbitrary question. I mean, like why not try to give Kong and at the end of this movie, Kong does have a little family, and it's great. It's I feel good about that. Is that sure. weird? Is that weird to say? <laughs> no, I mean, look, you, you can be happy for the monkey. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, I'm. I like the I like the the long portions of, you know, they invoke the movie Congo. You know, we are watching you. You know, I, I thought of yeah. Congo when I watched, of course, with um Zaire and the Diamond Mines, and anyway, uh, I like the portion where we go with Kong into the caverns, into the monkeys that are you know, being ruled by fear by the, by their tyrannical ruler. I like that. I even yeah, like have a terrible labor union. <laughs> awful labor. Union. I, I even liked the, I mean, I think it's eye rolly when Kong and like they're fighting in Rome and Italy and the pyramids and they're destroying all these absolutely priceless artifacts in human history. And so yeah, we tear up a bunch of shit in Rome. We tear a bunch of shit up in, um, Cairo. So yeah, and the Coliseum no longer belongs to Rome. It belongs to Godzilla. No, he sleeps there. That's his. <laughs> um, That's the other a- part of it is, too, and I thought was funny. Is so, like, we end up in Brazil at one point in this movie. Rio de Janeiro, yes. And um, it's a thwacking there, too. And with that part of it is, like, they do the the Christ, the Redeemer statue, Cristo Redimo. Um, you know, like this, this you know, like the, the famous Fast and Furious line, like, this of is course. Brazil, right? Yeah. Um, I honestly thought that the, there was no chance that the, the Christ the Redeemer statue didn't get knocked down. It doesn't. Shocker. But I thought for sure some piece of debris was supposed to annihilate that famous landmark as well. It's because nothing is safe. I think that I think that the filmmakers would have thought, you know what, maybe let's not touch that religious. Well, we tore up all three pyramids. Yeah, but that's not religious like a Christ statue would be, right? Bro, bro. They're pyramids. I'm mean, sure they're pyramids, but they're tombs. I get it, but they're also very. I mean, it's also, <laughs> but like even you can suspend disbelief. Like, oh, that's that's just that's CGI. There was no real monkey tearing up her pyramid. No, that's true. There wasn't but, a real one. But you know, if there's ever been a time in the last fifty years where people are going to be outraged at a fake, uh, the the fake statue of Rio de Janeiro being torn down with VFX, it's today. So yeah. maybe they just thought that was a battle. They just didn't want to pick. But I do think you're right. I mean. Somewhere, someone had an idea of like, you know, let's knock that down. That's iconic. Godzilla loves to knock down iconic statues or buildings. Let's do it. Why not? It would follow the theme of Godzilla. And I totally understand that. But, you know, it's just a thing. But, uh, yeah, I don't. The death toll there is catastrophic. Really catastrophic. And let me, I mean, usually Chris is my go to for this, but um, how did, to me, the CGI and like, Kong looks real to me. Yeah, it's fine. Like I don't have a problem with CGI in this. One. I think it's like, fan- like it's reached another point where like it's just it looks fantastic almost. Like it just looks so well, good. So when it's just CGI on the screen, well, like during the large battles with like Godzilla Kong, 
or when like it's Kong traversing through hollow earth, when it is just that part of it, it looks totally fine. When like they have to interact with humans in any way looks kind of wonky. Eh, it looks better than it has in years past though. Wait, listen, that's for sure. It has, it, it's supposed to look better year over year. Normally it doesn't, but it's always sure, supposed sure. to. You hear us, Netflix? You hear us, Netflix? Uh, yeah, that's no, the they don't thing listen. Is, well, they they obviously don't. I mean, that's just that's 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 obvious. But uh, yeah, I there's a lot of this movie that I think is just it's fun, man. And like, there's just it's okay to have a popcorn movie every once in a while where you and sure. your buddies, you and there's you nothing and, wrong with that at you all. Your buddy just go get a popcorn and drink and just have an afternoon, man. Just watching some big beasties slug it out why not well, yeah the thing is though is like there's nothing wrong with having fun at a movie right nothing fun wrong matters, at all. and i've talked about that a lot with with the time of you know now where like everybody's got to break down stuff and everything's got to be better than what it is before i don't think that that's true like you can watch a movie like this and i'll, I'll equate it exactly to a movie like i'm very versed in with transformers rise of the beast right a movie very similar to this in the vein of like, look, is it a bad movie? No, not at all. Is it a good movie? I don't even know if it's good, but is it fun to watch and kind of cool to see him like go at it? Hell yes, it is. Like every bit of that part works. I agree. And I'm and I'm happy to see like movies like that making a real comeback. Like not everything's got to be made for an Oscar. The thing is, though, like you just can't make the movies so bad. People are like, this is trash. Because, like, once you get to that level, like, people stop caring about it because, like, you don't care about it. Right. You're just I agree. putting shit out to make money. And that's totally fine. But give it some substance. Just a little bit. That's all you got to do. Well, but that's the thing is, like, I don't. <sighs> Go, I mean, com- comparing big franchises here is, like, even pirates, like, even as bad as 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 uninspired as they got towards the end in Transformers, like, I don't think they're without substance. They just, it just got old fast. I mean, at one you know, point we sucked, um, you know, there was a portal to like the bottom of the ocean and we were fighting there at the bottom. You mean in Pirates? Or yeah. The, or like when the, you mean when the sea was split, Salazar yeah. or whoever, I forget who did that. What, I don't even remember what movie that was, the fourth or the fifth one, but um, yeah, that's, no, it's, I agree. It's just, it gets, it gets weird fast, but these movies I don't think do because it, it all fits right in like the unit. Like it all fits to me right in the universe of a Godzilla movie and a Kong movie and or a combined effort movie with Godzilla and Kong is like, even if something stupid, like when Godzilla and Kong are fighting and then Mecha Godzilla comes and, 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 and Kong for Godzilla versus Kong in 2021 is it's not some stupid, like they don't have some stupid, like head nod look to each other like hey we got to work together to kill this guy to kill this mega version of me it's you know the little girl tells kong as he's laying there almost dead and you see godzilla in the background getting his ass whipped by mecha godzilla the little girl goes to kong and signs to him you know godzilla is not your enemy yeah get your ass up get your ass up and go (laughs) help it like it's not we don't get some i mean it actually fits in universe unlike you know we don't get like the monkey doesn't give like godzilla like a head nod like well, that would I have mean, been stupid we get we get that in this movie too when like when they portal out to um in cairo where he goes to get godzilla well we almost and, get it when when like godzilla gets to him and kong's like whoa 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 whoa! No, no, i don't no, want to like, fight he's yeah. like bro i don't want to fight you and then like end up they tussle for a little bit and, like he just like bitch slaps him he's like bro i told you i didn't want to do this today i i need like he's trying to like drag him into the portal <laughs> Like, I yeah, appreciated that. I thought that I did. was funny. I did, because they, the filmmakers here realized you can't just have... I mean, it's well, okay to so have bro moments, but save those actually, for when it matters. I actually can equate some of this to uh, why Godzilla was, like, trying to fight him. Because think about it, right? To that point in this movie, it's something that really does happen in this movie, is Godzilla is so amped up, right, to fight people. Like, he's been going through and eliminating Titans, taking their energy, and he's as, like as powered up um radiation wise as he can be like he's glowing pink purple which you know is like his highest level of power and like he's ready to go like i'm ready to whip somebody's ass like i know something's wrong i am fucking ready let's go and he's like hey kong i don't like you that much anyway i'm gonna beat your ass too <laughs> well, which I is mean- look you ever meet a dude that's a little bit drunk and really ready to fight? <laughs> I mean, we just watched Roadhouse last week. We talked yeah, about Roadhouse last week. Same yeah. kind of point. Same concept. 
bar fight. Like, well, no one sometimes, does that. Sometimes you hit your buddies in the face, too. Like, shouldn't have been standing there, son. Sorry, bro. Shouldn't have been standing there. Um, but overall, so let's uh, let's move into the last phase of this one. I mean, it's okay. So over, so overall, I don't. Here's some thoughts I ju- I just have going into this. Like, so overall, so let me ask you this: Who is a target demographic for this movie? And I know it's a simple, 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 simple question. Oh, dudes, eighteen to forty. Yeah, I think so too. But it's very Actually, in- probably a little bit longer, eighteen to fifty, probably. Okay, fair enough. Because because the time frame of Godzilla, I think you're probably right. Even a little, even I would even allow you know sixty or seventy. Okay, Godzilla's been around a long time. I it's get a dude movie though. That the fandom could be, you know, go back several decades. Um, I don't think, but this movie is very enjoyable. I think for both sexes, for for anyone who wants to go to this movie, I don't think it's like well, women it's dumb fun. wouldn't enjoy. It's just dumb fun. That's my point, and I think that you know your phrase of fun matters mm-hmm. is important here because it's at some point you're <laughs> like you watch. I forget who suplexes who off the pyramid, but you watch a, a monster suplex happen off the pyramid. Oh, um, excuse Godzilla, me, Godzilla, Godzilla, Kong. Godzilla suplex Kong. Okay, oh, yeah, I mean, at some point, that's just like my wife awesome. leans over to me in the theater. She goes, "He suplexed him." I'm like, <laughs> yeah. "Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, like, he hey. did." Um, yeah, but like, it's oh yeah, brother. <laughs> at some point, though, like that's you can't hold that against the movie. I don't think, and I've heard a lot. So a lot of you know, I'm working on a movie, so. There's a lot of like pretentious people walking around all the time, and I mentioned I was going to go watch this, and IMAX. I was really excited, and the, and one and one of them says, oh, pff, "Good waste of time." I, I just I no, I'm never look at him and go be like, "Yes, yes, I'm, it is." Well, I'm never going to retaliate in a negative way in the office, but I'm I just think you want to be a filmmaker and you don't understand the value of a big budget movie like this. Good luck, good yeah. luck with the studio ever wanting to do anything with you because you just don't. You've missed some of the very obvious things here is fun matters. And without these big blockbuster movies that make all the money for the studios, you don't have these tiny art house pretentious films. No, you don't don't, get the rest of it. That's the thing. I don't mean to say all art house films are pretentious. I don't mean to say they're all pretentious, but like. I mean, there's a lot of them that are pretentious. (laughs) Sure, but those don't fund studios. Films like this fund studios. And it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. That's kind of it's one of my final thoughts. I don't know if you have any like thing, and you know, I don't know if you want to say anything about that. But like, I know we talk about that, but not in that way all the time. And I'm just I really hate when when people look down on these type of movies because they're oh it's it's a it's just two people two big monsters fighting. How can you well well I like that. Well, turns out I I enjoy watching that on the screen. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's listen pretty rad. Sometimes turns out and it looks great. Like I I would have I didn't watch this in 3D. I had the option. I chose IMAX instead. Um, I think that would have been rad. Also, I did I, not watch it in 3D either. But you watched it in like Big done. D. I did watch it in Big D. Yeah. Which, well, I even I know the Big D you're talking about. Like that's still very respectable of a enhanced viewing of three or um like a, that's that's not quite IMAX, but it's close. No, it's it's a large screen theater. Yeah, it's huge. Um, the sound is great. The other the other part of it is too, is like this movie. If you look at it from the perspective of it's not movies not ever going to win an Oscar. And it's okay, right? Like, that's all of this movie needs to be. Just be decent story-wise and have, you know, buildings get smashed, you know, lizards fighting monkeys, fighting, you know, stegosauruses, fighting other monkeys, right? That's all we want. That's all we want to see. It doesn't need to be overly deep or more than that. That's what we want. So, well, if you want that, then... If you want more than that, then I mean, one thing I wanted to bring up was you can go watch the 2005 um, Jackson version of King Kong, and it had it is that 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 is a movie that was made to win Oscar. It didn't, no, but it stinks. It certainly wanted to, but it has all that the the sweeping score, those really reflective moments, the sacrifice, the on top of the building, the you know. The the Brody character gets up there and finally realizes at the end what Daryl's been fighting for, what Kong's been fighting. It has those moments. This is not that, and that's okay. Not every yep. movie has to, not every movie has to be contending for Oscars. I mean, I used to think, why wouldn't you just want movies, to, all, every single movie, to be a contender for Oscars? Well, because then you have a lot of movies that people don't care about. <laughs> you know, not a lot. Yeah, most. yeah not something making money, but. Um, on that same note, I, I I talked to just something like this is because one of the conversations spurned with one of the picture car guys is working on this, and I'm I mentioned, um, have they heard anything about the next Fast and Furious? And he goes, actually, 
We may, we, we may not even get them hmm. because the, the, the last movie uh, cost more to make than it took in. Or it, yeah, it cost more to make than the box office. So interestingly enough, I don't know. I mean, that was just an offhand comment, but again, it's like big budget. If big budget stops making movie, stops making money, it all shuts down. Sure. So, and that's kind of my final thought is like, we need movies like this and they're fun. And I enjoyed it forever. For all those reasons, this, this movie for me is a five and a half. Oh, okay. Right. It's scoring it. I, I mean, it could have been, a, I, th- I think it could have been a six. You know, I'm I'm just I'm just gonna bump it up to a six. I, I I thought it was very enjoyable. Um, it's a lot better than it could have been. It's it could have been just ass, but it's not. Uh, Kong is well realized. His story was well realized. I think the script is actually really good, really tight. Um, uh, but it's yeah, I just think it's a six. It's to, to me this movie's a lot of fun. Six. Okay. I mean, listen, that's totally fine because that's exactly where I'm going. Right? Like this movie could have been real bad. Um, I don't have any expectations when it comes to these movies at all. Like legitimately, I try to come in with a completely open mind. Um, because you know, we've talked about this before, like Godzilla versus Kong. I was okay with Godzilla King of monsters. Wasn't the biggest fan of, I thought that movie was fucking a little bit, not a little bit. It was a lot of bit too much. One of those kind of deals. Um, but like this movie's fine. Like it works. What it is is fine. Like you get to see fist fights between giant monsters and buildings and destruction and all that. Like you get to see all that here. So Like what if you shouldn't be at this movie? That's not what you wanted to see. Like it's not made for any of that. (laughs) Like, why are you here? What were you looking for? That's the thing is, how are you coming into this movie? Not knowing what it is or have you seen one of them before that? How do you not? I'd be surprised if somebody walked out of this movie and be like, man, I didn't expect that. (laughs) I, I'd like to know what they were expecting there. That's the whole thing. What the hell were you expecting? Nope. Um, Stupid. You know, yeah, it's fine. It's, it's six. It's a six for me. I enjoyed it. Um, I will absolutely watch this movie again when it hits streaming. When it hits, uh, it'll. What this movie should be? I guess I don't know what streaming service it'll Max. be on. Max. Is this it is, Max? It's Warner Brothers. Yeah, they're all Warner Brothers. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, this movie will be on on there that way, and we'll go from there. Oh, well, it'll, it, it'll be by June. Definitely, it'll be on. I imagine by June first, it'll be on stream. It'll be on Max streaming. I okay. I've, because they have right now, they have all of them on there, and they'd be foolish not to not to, not to offer you at at one time the full suite to and maybe entice people to to pay one monthly, you know, get it for monthly, and knowing they could just watch them all. I don't know; it just seems like a missed opportunity if they don't do that. But right now, they're all on Max. So yeah, you want large monsters beating each other up? This is fine. You want to watch a good Godzilla movie though? Godzilla minus one, far superior. Godzilla minus one is like an eight or a nine. Yeah, no, it's it's fucking. Random. I was just thinking about today after I got out of this movie. I'm like, God, that movie. This movie was fun, but the other movie was like an eight, was like a nine on a ten scale. Like that's great. Yeah, no, it's it's. Yes, it's indeed. Lot. But I mean, I'm happy with it with this one. I. How many more do you think we get of these? Uh, man, that's tough. I, I I would say we're at least two so or three more. I assume we get a couple more, right? But here's the thing: like, if it stopped today, like if this was the last one, isn't that still fine too? Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> yes, because the story, you know, it, I mean, it always it's, finishes it's after not, each movie. Yeah, but yeah, it's always a complete story. So I hope we get at least one or two more of these. I want I want three more. But if we don't get three, I understand. I mean, like three more is like another that's like another 10 dedicated years to these budgets. So yeah. that's a lot. That's a lot to ask of Warner. It's a lot to, for Warner Brothers to commit. But I mean, if they're still making money, why? Although this is some money because that'll lead to the better Harry Potter show. God, I hope that's good. Out. God, I hope that's good. It's very really important for Max that, that is good too. Because look, everyone knows the disaster that was Rings of Power. Everyone saw that. So yep. that's what you can't do is that. <laughs> you you cannot pull the Rings of Power anymore. You just not with that much money, you can't. Anyway, thank you for joining for this discussion. This has been episode 377A of Ford Love Cinema, hey. a movie hey. podcast. Each new episode posts every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. and Friday morning at 5 a.m. on the podcast service of your choice of the following six. Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Google Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music. Also on that list is YouTube. And keep in mind, the YouTube posting is later than these postings. Please leave a comment or two. Rate, subscribe. Every little bit helps. More importantly, thank you very much for listening. Check out the show on Twitter at Love Cinema Pod. I am at Grayson Maxwell One. I am at Rod Stillian. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, always posting new news stories on social media. And news. check us out on YouTube. Posting nudes. 
those two, yes. Uh, check us out on YouTube. Also, send us an email to for the love of cinema podcast at gmail.com. And next week, we are taking a look at Monkey Man and Society of Snow on Netflix. We're a bit late on that, but it did win an Oscar. So, did it or was it just nominated? It won. I don't right? know. It just nominated. Just nominated. nominated. Okay. Nominated. Nominated. Okay. 